Hello there. So, the thumbnail for this video, believe it or not, was created by advanced artificially intelligent computer algorithms to be the best on YouTube. Meant to fool YouTube into thinking that this is the best video it's ever seen. Of course, that isn't going to happen because it isn't a fantastic thumbnail. All that aside, in this video I'm going to show you how I made the best thumbnail. And it's really interesting because there's a logo on there that um, I didn't expect to see. So anyway, yes, my views are falling on YouTube as they always do. So I thought, well, why not stop trying to beat the algorithm by making good quality video content? Why not use artificial intelligence to fool the algorithm instead? Because cutting corners always works. And I'd recently seen a technology um, called GANs, Generative Adversarial Networks. It's a special type of artificial intelligence and it's used actually for deep fakes. So you may have seen videos of like Tom Cruise saying weird things on YouTube. Really great videos where they basically superimpose Tom Cruise's face onto an impressionist, unless you're told, you can't really tell that it isn't the real celebrity. Of course, that technology is also used for slightly more unsavoury things, which I won't mention in this video. So what are GANs? The example that I've always seen is you've got a counterfeiter and the police, okay? And the counterfeiters make their fake money, but each time they make their fake money, the police spot that the money isn't real and they go back to the counterfeiters and they say I'm arresting you because this money isn't real and I can tell it's not real because it's got your face on it not a picture of the queen and then the next time when the counterfeiters get out of prison this time they learn from their mistakes and they put a picture of the queen on but they get arrested again and the police say well actually the picture of the queen that you put on there was drawn in crayon and on real notes they're drawn in ink. So this kind of process continues until the counterfeiters are really, really good at making fake money. Um, so they kind of play each other off, improving both of them. So I thought I could use this to train a computer algorithm to make a YouTube thumbnail that would fool YouTube into thinking it was from a very successful video. So the first thing you need when you're going to do that is data. You need to be able to show your computer algorithm an example of uh, existing thumbnails so that it can learn the features of those thumbnails. So I decided to download a thousand YouTube thumbnails, the top 1000 most viewed videos on YouTube. Now that should have been really easy, but it wasn't. So there are websites out there where you can put the URL of a video in and download the individual thumbnail. But even if that took like 10 seconds, that's like 10,000 seconds, which is like nearly three hours, isn't it, to actually download thumbnails. That's ridiculous. I'm not going to do that. So I used a couple of scripts that I found online. First of all, I had to get the video URLs out of a playlist. Then I had to extract the thumbnails from those 1000 videos. It probably would have been quicker actually to have done them manually, like I said before, but being a computer scientist, you always want to automate things. And if I ever want to do this ridiculous task again in the future, I will be able to do it a lot quicker. So once I downloaded the thumbnails, um, unfortunately, a number of them were in a dot web P format, although it opens in Firefox and other web browsers, isn't actually a recognizable image format for most image programs. So I then had to pay for a little bit of software to convert that so that I could read it into Python. So I turned them into JPEGs and here I have a folder of loads and loads of YouTube thumbnails. These are the top 1000 YouTube videos. You can see they're quite diverse. And from a machine learning perspective, this isn't great. Really, there is no consistency between them at all, which is a little bit of a bugger. But anyway, we've got a thousand of those. And uh, I took somebody else's code for actually generating artificial pictures of items of clothing. And um, I applied that to this. Now, training artificially intelligent computer algorithms is really, really slow. You need 
cutting edge computers to be able to train these sorts of things. I tried to train them on my MacBook Pro and despite being called a pro laptop, you can't really train neural networks, which is another word for artificial intelligence. Um, you can't really train those on a MacBook Pro. I tried to and after 24 hours, I trained absolute gobbledygook. So I needed to find a way around this no access to GPU technology. So I found something called Google Collabs, which is an online system where you can put in your Python code and actually run it on Google's GPUs. Now they do offer other GPU services which you have to pay for, but the beauty of this Google Collabs thing is that it was completely free. So I started off training some very small images. I rescaled the little thumbnails down to something like 32 pixels by 32 pixels just to see if it would do anything interesting. And I trained my computer algorithm for something like 500 iterations or epochs as they're called. At epoch naught, uh, yeah, it looks pretty naff. Um, by epoch 12, really weird images with some strange repeating patterns in them and some, you know, colours and oddities coming out. And if we kind of scroll right down to, uh, or here we go, image 356, wow! You can actually see that we've got some really cool looking thumbnails here. Um, they're not actually recognisable objects by the looks of it, but there are, there's odd things that look a bit like kind of ghostly faces. I mean, they're kind of believable thumbnails, albeit at a 32 by 32 resolution. So I tried a few different sizes and I kept running out of memory. I settled on training using images that were 128 by 128 because I figured I'd be able to look at those in a bit more detail. And I trained to 500 epochs and at 460, it looks a bit like this. They're all kind of a bit bland and not that colourful, aren't they? But they're definitely thumbnails. Let's see what this artificially intelligent uh, algorithm has learned to create to beat the YouTube algorithm. Well, that's uh, a bit abstract. Looks like kind of llamas and animals and things. Quite nice colours. The crucial thing here you will notice is it in the bottom left-hand corner, this particular thumbnail has the Vivo logo. This artificially intelligent algorithm has learnt to put Vivo in the bottom left hand corner. Now does this mean that putting Vivo in the bottom left hand corner of a thumbnail makes your video successful? No. But what this does tell you is that a strong feature of the top 1000 YouTube videos is that a lot of them are music videos by Vivo. I'm not sure I can really include the Vivo logo in my thumbnails because it's kind of, you know, a little bit, tiny bit illegal. These aren't identifiable objects, are they? They're more sort of colour and areas of shade and, and highlight. The majority have the Vivo logo, let's be brutally honest there. Some really weird patterns and effects works of art in their own right. In fact, this technology has actually been used to create new works of art by famous artists that could fool experts. And some of them have been sold for huge amounts of money. Although I hardly think anyone would pay me for these terrible thumbnails. But you know, maybe these do have features of them that make them a little bit appealing. And perhaps I should be putting these as my thumbnails with my own text on top or, you know, perhaps not. So if I put one of these on my YouTube video, will my video do exceptionally well? Well, no, it won't. I found a study that looked into YouTube thumbnails and it was found that actually the biggest predictor of whether a YouTube video was going to do well was, and wait for this because you will need to work on this so that your videos improve as well. The biggest predictor is the success of the previous videos. So your next video will do well if your previous videos have done well. Bugger. So why are these thumbnails so bad? Well, as I said before, there's quite a lot of variation in the thumbnails we've been looking at. This neural network just can't learn those really complex features, either because I haven't given it enough time um, or the network that I'm using to train it 
isn't kind of capable of learning this this kind of detail but I think one of the big things here is that although it seemed like quite a lot of data to have a thousand YouTube thumbnails I probably need about a hundred thousand for it to really start to learn for example faces and objects in a scene to be able to put them in a thumbnail but it's interesting for me at least that even this simple network has just learned to put vivo for everything anyway did you click on this video because you were interested in the topic or because of the amazing thumbnail let me know down below i'm about to get sued by vivo so um, i may see you next week I may not. My Patreons are scrolling down the screen now. Thank you to all of you. You all get early access to my videos because you donate just a few dollars each month. Thank you also to George Foote and Magnanimous Meg who are extremely generous Patreons, Patreoners. Um, thank you very much. I shall see you next time for another video.